So I decided to take some time off for a couple of weeks, and guess what? Midjourney just decides to release a bunch of new features. Go figure. <laughs> but let's not waste time on things that have already been discussed ad nauseum on YouTube, and instead I'd like to share with you some of the things that I've been working on on Promptalot. That's right, folders for your prompts. So let's jump right in and take a look at the goods. All right, so if you're a regular user of the Promptalot web application, then you may have noticed a few changes on the user interface, particularly on the left-hand side. So if you take a look on the left here, you'll notice that there are a couple of new items in the navigation. One of the first things you'll notice is the item, My Folders. And if you click on it, you'll find a section that looks a little bit like this. Now at the very top of this page, you'll find all of your folders, or at the very least, a button that'll allow you to add a folder and in the lower section, you'll find all of the very same prompts that you're used to seeing within the My Prompt section. So essentially all of the prompts that you've created within your collection. And if we have a brief look at the My Prompt section, you'll notice that all of the prompts are essentially the same. Now, while superficially this may look like these are exactly the same sections and they do pretty much the same thing, it's not entirely the case. The devil is in the details. You can essentially think of the My Prompt section as well as the My Folder section as two distinct ways of looking at your prompts. They're different views. So for example, the My Prompt section is essentially an endless stream of all of your prompts that is searchable and you can just find anything you want. There's no point in actually sorting anything in this section because you just search for it and you'll find it. The My Folders section, on the other hand, is a folder-centric view of all of your prompts. Now, I know this all sounds a little bit complicated, but I think you'll get a better understanding once I explain to you and show you what the exact difference is. So let's start off by creating two new folders. So I'll click on Create New Folder right here. This opens up a modal window, which allows me to enter my project. I simply confirm, and this will create my new folder. I'll create another one, and this time I'll call it my just children's book. You can call it whatever you want. And once we've created these folders, you just see them pop up up here in this section. Now, right now, these prompts are empty, and that's why you see zero prompts listed below the name of the folder. So now it's time to add some prompts to our folders, and there's two ways of doing this. The easiest way is to simply select one of these prompts up here and drag and drop it over the folder where you want to place it into. I'm going to do this for a couple of these. And as you can see, while I'm adding these to the folders, they're also disappearing from my list of prompts down here. Now, the other way that you can add a prompt to a folder is by clicking the Options button here on the toolbar of a prompt and then selecting the Add to Folder button over here, which looks like a folder with, a, with an arrow that's pointing down. If you click this, it will open up this new modal window and you can select which folder you want to add the prompt into. So you simply confirm and it's done. I'll do this one more time with this one. This time I'll put it into my project. Oh, it's not really for a children's book, this kind of prompt, but I'll add it to my project. So what you can see now here is that at the very top, below the name of each folder, you'll see how many prompts are inside that folder. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, so now before we take a look inside each one of these folders, there's something I want to show you. Remember how I told you that the My Folder section as well as the My Prompt section are essentially two different ways of looking at your prompts? Well, let's have a look at the My Prompt section real quick. And what you can see is that all of the prompts that I just added to folders, they're still visible here. They've essentially not moved. They're just, this is my still my entire list of prompts. So what happens if I go back to the My Folder section though is exactly those prompts which I've added to folders have disappeared from this list. And that's because those particular prompts are now inside one of these two folders. And that's why they've been hidden or they've essentially disappeared from the rest of the list. They're not visible in the folder view because they're inside a lower section of the hierarchy, if you wish. The uppermost level of this hierarchy still shows all of the prompts that have not been assigned to a particular folder, whereas those that have been assigned to a folder are inside each one of their respective folders. And if you wanted to look at those particular prompts, we would have to click on the respective folder. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to open up the My Projects folder. And as you'll see, 
we immediately get to the section of that folder and it shows all of the three prompts that I've added to it. Now you can essentially do all of the same things that you can do elsewhere in the application with the slight exception of the like button, which has been replaced in this particular folder structure with a remove from folder button, which is meant to be really easily accessible. So for example, if you wanted to remove a prompt from this particular folder, what you would do is you would go to the toolbar and simply click on the remove from folder button. And there you go, it's gone. The other option is to open up the options section again within the toolbar and then click it here. But again, I've added it to the topmost area of the toolbar just to make it very easily accessible. And let me just go out to my other folder real quick. And I, there's another thing I want to explain to you about how folders work. So if I want to delete a folder, there's a button up here that says delete folder. If I click it, it's going to ask me for confirmation first. So it asks me, are you sure? Just to make sure that I don't accidentally delete a folder. But when I delete a folder, it disappears, obviously. But the other thing is my prompts don't disappear. They're still there. As you can see, both of the prompts that we had in those folders, or sorry, in that folder are still visible. That means that when you delete a folder, it simply deletes the association between the prompt and the folder, but not the prompt itself. So there's absolutely no risk of losing any data here. The only thing that you may lose if you accidentally delete a folder is a bit of your organized structure. Now, I know this is just a relatively small improvement so far, but trust me, this is just the beginning. I've been working on a lot of things in the background. They're just taking a little bit longer and I've really got a lot planned for this area. All right, so now let's move on to the next small feature. All right, so another thing that you may have noticed ever since the release of Midjourney's new tuner or style tuner feature is this little section here in the nav bar called styles. And there, it basically shows you all styles and my styles. If I go into the all styles section, then what it will do, it will surface all of the prompts with which are public within the platform that have some sort of a style parameter reference with a style code in them. Now, remember, this only shows those which are public, right? So it doesn't contain all of those where people have marked their prompts as private. There are, however, also some prompts that have duplicates. So for example, the same style code may be used by multiple prompts. In this view, the default view, it filters all of those out. It only shows you one of them. But if you want to display duplicates as well, you can hit this checkbox called show duplicates, and it will then display all of the duplicates as well. Okay. Now, again, these are just the public styles. And if you want to see all of your own styles, well, then you go into the my style section. Now, for the time being, this does the exact same thing as the all style section. It just surfaces all of the prompts that already contain these style codes. And you can see if you hover over the copy prompt or copy code button, then it shows you this sort of code at the top. And the main difference is essentially that the my style section focuses on doing this exclusively for your own prompts. So if you're already working with styles a lot, and then in the interim, this may be a good solution for you to keep track of all of your different styles. So you would simply add the prompt to your collection and then use the my style section to make them more visible. So I hit show duplicates. I don't think I have any duplicates here. It doesn't show them, right? Now, I do have plans to allow you to have a more structured way of saving your styles. So not just making them linked to an existing prompt, but basically making it just much more specific for styles. And then you would have them sort of listed at the very top, similar to how folders work. Just bear in mind that the style tuner is still relatively new. And what I usually try to do is I try to figure out how are people actually using these new features before I, before I really implement them in a proper way. Because, you know, to be honest, I still have to experiment a whole lot with these new features in order to understand really, you know, what's the, what's the most convenient way of using them, like what's a typical way of using them and what's a convenient way of storing them and organizing them for later use. You see, that's also one of the reasons why within my mid-journey course, I tend to take some time until I add lessons on new features. You see, you see, I can't really teach people something unless I've had enough time to experiment with them until I've truly understood how they work and then figured out a way how to best fit them into the curriculum of a course. After all, within a course, you want the learning experience to be progressive. And so it really needs to fit into the overall curriculum. Hey, sorry for interrupting you right in the middle of the video, but I just wanted to share something with you. 
As many of you know, I have an online video course called Masters of Midjourney, which teaches you all of the foundational skills that you need in order to get the most out of Midjourney. And I know that some of you are still on the fence, trying to figure out whether this is right for you. And I get it. You look at all of the free stuff that I share right here on my YouTube channel, and you ask yourself, how much more can there really be? Well, many of the things that I do in these videos, including the method that I just used, are explained in far more detail in the course. I show many different examples and I teach these to a degree that makes sure that you really understand how they work and you can apply them to pretty much any project, not just one particular use case. So if you want to learn how to control Midjourney and prompt with intent, then visit mastersofmidjourney.com. I'll see you on the flip side. All right, a small but very important change for me is that I've now moved the feature requests away from the platform Canny.io and into my own self-built section. So if you open up this profile menu here in the top right corner and you go to feature requests, you'll notice that we now have an entirely different way of keeping track of feature requests. And the reason why I've done this is not because it's just more convenient to have it all in one place, but also because I need some way of keeping track of who is actually making requests and who is voting for the requests. Are the people who are asking for features free users or are they pro users? And as you might imagine, I do need to focus my efforts primarily on those who are actually supporting the further development of the platform. So that's why whenever a feature request is put in or somebody votes on a feature request by voting up or down, a pro user will have considerably more weight than a free user. Now I know that free users may not be happy about this, I'm sorry, but after all, it's the pro users that are really supporting me and helping me you know, be able to actually dedicate time to further development of the platform. So if you do want to have more say in what sort of features do get implemented, then that might be a reason to get a pro membership. Anyway, if you want to add a new feature request, you simply click the button up here, add feature requests, it opens up a window and I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So enough about feature requests, let's address one last thing. So until now, whenever you save a prompt to the Prompt.Lot website, no matter whether it's a single upscaled image or an image grid, you would always see the very first image. So with a single image, it's obviously the single image. And if it's an image grid, it would basically crop top left corner image and display that on the website. The only way to actually see the full image grid would be to access the individual prompt. And then below the image that's highlighted at the top, you would see the full image grid down here. And that's one of those things that has kind of been bothering me because I really want to surface each and every single one of those images, even those within the grid. So that's why I've been spending a lot of time on revamping the entire structure of how all prompts and their images are stored in the database. These new improvements aren't live yet because the migration process is quite time consuming. However, fairly soon I'll be rolling out new individual prompt pages, as well as making it easier to find individual images within the entire database. You see, you may not quite realize it, but there are a total of 35,000 individual images within the database already. That's right, 35,000 individual images. Roughly half of those are public and the other half have been marked as private by their individual owners and that's why you can't necessarily see them. Now, it may not necessarily be important for you to know how big the database is, but perhaps it gives you an idea of why this is so time consuming and why it may be challenging to actually go through the migration process. And don't worry, there's absolutely no impact to you as a user. I've been doing all of this in the background and ideally you should not notice any big differences during that process. And perhaps you now kind of understand why I'm also focusing a little bit more on the pro users simply because this, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of work. So that's it for this week's update on all of the most recent updates and developments on Prompt-A-Lot. I hope you enjoyed this update and perhaps you'll consider becoming a pro user. Remember to check out the video description for my Midjourney course, as well as a whole bunch of other free stuff. Thank you for watching and remember to keep on learning. Take care. Cheers. Thank you.